An air conditioner in every classroom. That was the cabinet's pledge to young students two years ago. This year in May, the government completed its project, installing air conditioning at all 3,500 plus primary and junior high schools in the nation. For students, there are plenty of benefits to having an air conditioner in the class. But the question is, can Taiwan's power grid handle the extra demand? Today in our Sunday special report, we look into how much juice it takes to keep the AC running. And we stop by Taiwan's new cooler schools to see what they're doing to minimize their carbon footprint. It's a scorching summer day and the children are sweating profusely. Everyone is a little restless. Until recently, scenes like these were a daily reality. In 2020, the executive yuan earmarked 35.8 billion NT to equip every elementary and junior high school in Taiwan with air conditioners. By May 2022, the government had installed more than 180,000 units in more than 3,500 schools around Taiwan. But all this air conditioning needs electricity to work. Where does all the juice come from? Let's run the numbers for four months, May, June, September and October. Say that air conditioning is turned on between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. whenever the temperature exceeds 28 degrees. That's roughly 260 million kilowatt hours consumed every year. According to Thai Power, that's just about 0.1 percent of all electricity generated in Taiwan. When the operating reserve is in the single digits, turning on 180,000 AC units at schools puts a big burden on the grid. To keep the energy supply stable, Thai Power signs contracts with schools, in which schools agree to pay for a fixed power capacity each month. If the school uses more than its contract capacity, it must pay a higher rate for the excess amount. This can quickly take a toll on school budgets. Early on, the government didn't offer any subsidies for electricity, so all the money had to come out of our own budget. We only turned on the air conditioning when the temperature exceeded 30 degrees, and only till the temperature dropped to a certain level. We used the system sparingly. Even so, we kept incurring extra fees because our air conditioning use exceeded our contract capacity. You can use this card and put it on the card reader to activate the system. Then you can use the remote control to turn on the air conditioning unit. To help classrooms control their air conditioning bills, the government installed a smart energy management system in Taiwan's classrooms. The system can be used to remotely adjust classroom temperatures and to turn units on and off. It can also show which classrooms are currently using air conditioning. All the information is accessible on a computer screen. It can be used to monitor the conditions in each classroom which classrooms have the air conditioning on and which ones have it off. So the person in charge can monitor everything. After school lets out at 3.30 p.m., the system can be used to see whether any units were left on. The units can be turned off remotely. The smart system shows how much electricity is being used at any moment. It allows the school to participate in demand response programs to reduce electricity usage. Demand response, or demand bidding, is an approach in which virtual electricity providers can provide a negative energy supply. For example, say there is a need to increase consumption by one kilowatt hour, we can obtain that additional kilowatt hour from the supply side by generating an additional one kilowatt hour. Or we can adjust the demand side by asking users to reduce consumption by one kilowatt hour. This would also satisfy that need. By having air conditioning in classrooms, students are able to learn in comfort. And today, there's a government subsidy to help cover the cost of keeping cool. It's an ideal scenario for students and their parents. But for the sake of Taiwan's energy security, there must be measures in place that keep the grid from overloading. Thai Power offers schools the option of joining a demand response program. This means that when the energy supply is short, 
Tsai Power notifies the school's electricity management system, giving a 15-minute warning to the school to turn off the air conditioning or reduce usage. Later, the school can take all that electricity it saved and apply it to its electricity bill in order to lower costs. 因為我們學校的老師常常都會有辦理戶外教教育這個區塊 At our school, teachers often hold classes outdoors. We can adjust our energy use during those periods that they are outside. That allows us to save on our utility bills. To save money, schools can adjust and manage their consumption with Thai power. But some schools have taken things a step further by becoming energy producers themselves. This is Wenxing Elementary School in Taoyuan's Guishan District. The school has solar panels to generate electricity and even lithium batteries to store it. About one-third of the electricity consumed is generated on-site, making the school less reliant on Thai power. We have about 40 kilowatts of photovoltaic panels that we operate ourselves. They can generate 48,760 kilowatt hours every year. In addition to supplying the school with electricity, we store the excess in lithium batteries. Think of our school as having a massive portable power bank, like that used with cell phones. Thanks to our portable power bank, and by adjusting our energy management system, we are able to regulate our energy consumption. What's even more special about the school is that its energy management system is powered by artificial intelligence. Whenever needed, the system can automatically reduce electrical usage by 30% to avoid fines for overconsumption. Look at February and March. Our solar panels contributed more energy than we got from Thai Power. The blue bar is the electricity provided by Thai Power. The yellow bar is the energy generated from the photovoltaic panels. Green represents the electricity drawn from the lithium batteries. If our school is close to exceeding the contract capacity, the AI system kicks in and uses our school's resources to smooth out peaks in consumption and fill in dips automatically. By shaving off the peaks, we can prevent ourselves from exceeding our contract capacity. The AI energy management system was developed jointly by the school and a tech company. Now, every watt of electricity used in the school is recorded, including electricity used in corridors and other common spaces. With this data, the system can determine the appropriate contract capacity for the school. We should limit our electricity use and adapt so that it stays within 100 kilowatts. That's the safest way to go. With the Executive UN's air conditioning policy, we've had to raise our contract capacity. And that's why we need the system even more. It's our support system. It can help us take all the excess electricity we generate and use it during peak times. That way we can reduce overconsumption. We can avoid exceeding the contract capacity. It also helps with our bills. We generate our own electricity that we don't need to pay for. The virtual power plant at Wenxing Elementary saves the school nearly 5,000 NT a month on its electricity bill. To educate students on electricity consumption and encourage them to save power, the school created a mock power company headed by a cute cartoon monster. The monster's facial expressions help the kids get a sense for how their school is powered. There are four expressions that we use. They range from cute, to somewhat nervous, to anxious, to crying in pain. We tell our students, the more electricity we use, the closer the school will be to getting fined. So we need to conserve energy. The Executive Yuan's air conditioning policy has created a comfortable environment for students in Taiwan. Over at Wenxing Elementary, the policy has also helped children better understand the importance of saving energy.